Hey, what's up, guys? Shake Swan Pretty here. Another week, another episode. After 16 years, happy Jalen Orlando Pirates part ways. Mamelodi Sundown signing another international player. And then Victor Latwala moves to Sekukune United. Not kids, the Chiefs. Let's talk about it. Let's go. That's how it goes. They keep asking about the best when they know it's me. Okay. Asking about the rest when they know it's me. Straight in, I guess. <laughs> you know it's me. So let's kick things off with the WEF card that's happening in Morocco at this moment. And gotta start off with some good news. Banyana Banyana, our ladies have made it to the final. Yes, they've made it to the final of that tournament. I mean, you know, this this team just fills with pride. It's a team that just has a mentality of always winning games. And you know what's funny? I, I actually don't think Banyan Banyana get enough credit. The reason why I say that is that every single time they do something great, it's like as if they always have to throw in Bafana Bafana. Oh, Bafana Bafana. No, they don't play like Banyana Banyana. And I always feel as though like, I wish they could get the credit just for them. Like, I want to just celebrate them and what they're doing with their achievements. And they've made it to a final. And as for Bafana Bafana, they can see what's going on. They can see the party and they know that, hey, if you want to be able to be celebrated like that, being recognized like that, you just have to win games. That's what you simply have to do. And they've made it to the final. This is when the final is going to take place, 23rd of July. I mean, best, best of luck to the ladies because also they've qualified to the World Cup that's going to be taking place next year. So big ups to them. They keep making the nation proud. And for me, I just want to celebrate you ladies because you simply deserve it. Let's bring things back to Mzanzi now. And we got to talk about our local teams. Swallows, they were busy this week. You know, in this past week, they were busy. They announced signings as well that have come to the club. As you can see on screen, these are the signings that they've made in Banjwa. You know, Mchali's coming as well. Wasim Isaacs. But I got to tell you, the, the signing that impressed me the most has to be Keegan Allen. I, I mean, how Swallows were able to coop such a player. You saw him playing within the Netman Cup with Tux as well. He won the most promising player. Still so young, he's 21 years old. And for me, what I like about his story as well is the route he decided to take within his football career. People don't know that he was actually part of Mamluri Sunnowns. And Mamluri Sunnowns, like he said in his words, they offered him a five-year contract, but he turned it down. He turned it down. You know how many players can you say turned down Mamluri Sunnowns? Well, he did it. You know, and look where his career has taken him with that, with that rejection that he gave to Mamluri Sundowns. He made that decision because he wanted to settle at a team and be able to play minutes. And that's what I've been ad advocating for on the show in terms of players should be focusing on getting minutes on the pitch. And he didn't want to be loaned out. He didn't want to be loaned out. And you've seen, obviously, with Mamluri Sundowns, they'll sign some players and sometimes they will loan them out. But... He wanted to take time to settle at his new club, and that's what happened at Tux. And now he finds himself in the DSTV Premiership. And from what I've seen of Keegan Allen, there's a leader there. You know, there's definitely a leader within, within that club. And he's at a club that once had Defender of the Season. So if they just get things right, and with Dylan Kerr, that's there. You can just imagine the type of player he's going to be. And remember when I say this, he's going to play for Bafana Bafana one day. I can guarantee you that he's going to play for Bafana one day. But Swallow's doing business, and I think they're doing it smart. And good luck to them and as well as the club. Pagamani Mashambi. News came out about Mashambi this week. He's parted ways with Mamluri Sanaun. His contract has come to an end. And Sanaun said they will not be extending the contract. And how sad is, how sad is that situation at this moment? How sad is... His career gone. You know, when he burst onto the scene at Bitrus Vets, he went all the way to Egypt. And that's how young he was. Such a talented player. He came back to Mamlodi Sanaons. I don't think he was settling well in Egypt. And I remember he scored that league winning goal at the, the last fixture that they had in one season. And from then on, you know, he, he wasn't playing much. He was loaned out to Amazuru. And then he went to Chipper United. Both moves didn't work out. With the cheaper one, you could probably argue that it was the long-term injury. He's only 24 years old. 
And with all of that that's happened, that I've just stated, he's only 24 years old. And then there's also that story with him and what's happened with the national team and coming into poor condition as well. And you know what? I'm, I'm upset. I'm sad because, you know, I love this game and I love this game with a passion. And I know I'm not a great footballer. That's why I don't try. <laughs> I can just talk about it. But what upsets me is when you can see someone else who's been gifted that ability to kick a ball and they do not use their talents to the best of their abilities. And that's Matlambi. That's him. You have to ask yourself, did he have the right people around him? Because clearly not. We've heard Benny McCarthy speak about probably the influences that he had at Amazulu. And he's still 24. And the crazy thing about it is he can still turn it around. He can still turn it around if he wants to. But he must want to. Because, Pagman Matlambi, if you're watching this, I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I'm tired. I've put out so many video content pieces on social media. Hoping that Amazulu was the thing. Hoping that Cheaper was the one. Hoping that Sundowns was the one. And it hasn't happened. But you have to decide if you want to be a footballer or not. Mamilodi Sundowns signing another international. So that's the news that came out this week. I, I couldn't believe it because you saw last week I came out with that foreign quarter in terms of the number of players that they have at the club. There is no way they could have added more because if they're adding more, then you sort of ask yourself who is going to be sacrificed. But the player in question, Marcelo Allende, yep, reports that he's already signed for Mamelo de Sanons. That's what the reports are saying. He's only 23 years old. I checked him out. I checked out in terms of what kind of positions does he play in. He rolls in around the wings. You know, he also can play within the attacking midfield position as well. Um, he's capped for Chile. So he's played for Chile, the national side. So when, when he's capped for Chile, I mean, surely he must be a very good footballer. And his numbers state that he is a very good good footballer as well. In terms of how important he, he, he was to his team, perhaps if he's left, by the way. He's had 87 appearances for his previous club, scored 16 goals. 23 assists, and as you can see, that's 39 goal involvement. I mean, in 87 appearances, just goes to show the quality that he is. So, last week I spoke about the foreign quarter. Let's also just mix it up a bit because Mamelu Sanon does that to you because the signings that they bring in, the squad that they have, it makes you ask questions in terms of who is going to play and who is not going to play. So, let me show you a list of the attacking midfielders that I think Marcelo Allende is going to be playing or at least competing against within the Mamelodi Sundowns team. There's Kapinga, there's Kutumela, Mutupa, Sirino, Maboy, Mkuma, Ralani, Tembazwane, Mkulise, Domingo. We're not finished yet, eh? <laughs> Mayema, Saverda, and as well as Mbule. So you could say a majority of those players are going to be occupying the same spaces in the forward line. I'll leave it to you guys. Tell me in the comments who is most likely not going to play and who is going to play. Because yes, they're in all these competitions. But surely even in all these competitions, this number is quite a lot. But Marcelo Allende, good luck at Mamelodi Sundowns. Peter Shalulile. This man, guys. This man scores a lot of goals. This man is ruthless. This man has raised the standard of what strikers should be like in the PSL. Sundowns came out and said that he signed a five-year deal. A deal that I feel that he deserves. One thing I love about Peter Shalile is his work rate, you know, never mind the goals. Yes, he doesn't know the goals, but that man just never stops running. And every single time Sundowns buys forwards or buys strikers, I always think you just don't put Shalila out the side. You just can't do it because I genuinely believe there's not another striker in this league that works as hard as he does. And let me show you. You guys think I'm kidding because, you know, people make jokes about PSL and the goal scorers. 
Look at these numbers. 84 games, 52 goals, and 15 assists. Mind you, he's only been at Mamre Hussan now a couple of years. I'm not talking about a guy who's been there for a while. He's been there only for a couple of years. You could say about two or three years that he's been there for. And I really hope that because of the honesty within his game, I really hope that he can break that Mbisuma record. I really hope that he can score more than 25 league goals in a season. He was almost there. He got 23 last season. And I think he can be able to get 25. But talk about a man who deserves a five-year deal. It was up to me, man. I probably would have given you 10. But good luck to you and Mamlodi Sundowns. Let's move on to news that caught me by surprise. I don't think anybody saw this coming. 16 years, over 400 games, 18 goals, and 8 trophies. Happy Jelle and Orlando Pirates have parted ways. I didn't see that one coming. I really didn't. I, I thought if he was going to leave the club, it's something that could have been dealt with a lot earlier. But you can just imagine with the arrivals of CBC and as well as Kroki as well, he probably wasn't going to see enough game time. And Orlando Pirates released a statement and they spoke about they wanted to give him a role in a non-playing um, capacity at the club. And that's not what he wanted. He wanted to play more. You can tell the guy loves the game, right? And he's been a model professional. I think he's been a model professional. I think he is more in the mold of Buffon, in the mold of players that stay at one club for such a long time. Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, you remember those players that just stayed at one club the whole time. And him, Happy Jelly, you can't separate him and Orlando Pirates. That's just it. I can't even begin to imagine what he would look like in any other kit. So the fact that he'll be going, I think it'll be a huge loss. And I think something that must not be underestimated, he was such a leader. So if he leaves the football club, who's going to lead next? Because... That leadership position, it's not just about coming onto the pitch and, and, and wearing the armband and looking cool and looking fancy. It's also about having to uphold the club's standards. And that is something that he's done throughout his career. So Orlando Pirates have a headache on their hands in terms of trying to replace him from a captain's role. But I think he would still be a beneficial signing for any other club, um, any other club that is trying to survive relegation, probably get into the top eight Top four as well. Just his experience as well. And Happy Jelle, I salute you, man. You have been great at Orlando Pirates. Not too much drama with regards to the way that you played on the pitch. And I wish you all the best with your career. Let's talk about our men's national team, Bafana Bafana. They participated in the Kwasafa Cup. And unfortunately, they did not win the trophy. Um, they got the second place trophy within the Kwasafa Cup. And that is the plate. Not what we obviously wanted, because we wanted them to retain um, the competition. I think what was confusing for me, having to watch the games that Bafana played, is the players that were selected. I didn't understand what was really going on or what was the criteria that was used to, to pick the players. And then eventually you start reading reports and you get a sense that, oh, they're trying to prepare the under-23s. So it's not necessarily the first team um, players that are playing. They're trying to prepare the under-23s. And I think also the format of the competition hurt them because they immediately qualified for the quarterfinals. So they were not part of the group phase. And because there were so many players and they were brand new to wearing the Bafana jersey, it just took them so long to get the hang of it. Also to get that fluidity as well amongst the team. It just was not there. And you could see it within the games. But eventually as the tournament went on, hence why they went on to win the plate. And this was preparations for the Chan tournament that's going to be happening next year. And I would love it if Bafana Bafana stuck to it. I would love it if they stuck to these players that they picked. Of course, there's reports that some of the players won't be able to go because they do not have their passport. So I would sincerely hope that every player within this country, whether you play at the Motipa Foundation Championship or the DSTV Premiership, or even you'd say that with ABC Motipa League as well, just make sure you get your passports because reading that story was, I mean, that's something you have to sort out. So I would hope that 
they keep the squad and I'll be watching them very closely. Sekukune United have signed another player by the name of Victor Letswalo. Goal scorer at Real AM, scored a number of goals, was, was valued highly at the club. But the surprise of all this news was the fact that he did not go to Keza Chiefs. As it was rumored that he was going there, he went to Segukune United. And you sort of look at the amounts that were being spoken about within the reports. I don't really want to get into that. I would rather focus on the fact that Segukune actually got themselves a very good player. A player who was second behind Shaluli in terms of the top goal scorer for the Golden Boot um, within the league. Now, here's all the signings Segukune have made. You know, consider the fact that they have released 12 players, but these are the new players that they're bringing into the club. You can see there you got Daniel Cardozo, you got Terofato Mabasa, you know, you've got now Victor Letswalo. I've got a question for you guys that's watching. Where do you expect Sekukune to finish with the squad? Because when I look at these names and the experience that these players have, I would like to think Katenu Tembu has to get this team within the top eight but let me know what you think in the comments it is time for the bit of the week yep it's that time of bit of the week this is where i show you my bet slip hoping that it lights in green and the good news i can tell you i won again <laughs> i tell you man this feeling <laughs> this feeling feels good as you can see on screen there's the bet slip it all came out right. I, can't, I mean, it's, it's amazing because also not only are you watching women's football a lot more, but now you're even getting sort of money to get the snacks to watch more women's football, which is great. So this week, got two games. Just two. Just two. You know, you don't want to get too ahead of yourself when you're on this winning streak. So England going up against Spain. It's the women's. I think this game is going to be very close. But the England team have scored 14 goals within the Euros already. And I just think they have the capacity to, to score more than Spain. The next one, club friendlies. Yes, the club friendlies are back. So the big teams are playing again. Manchester United is playing. Arsenal is playing. Liverpool is playing. Leipzig is playing. Crystal Palace is playing. They're all playing, which is great. Another club friend they'll be playing is Red Bull. Leipzig going up against Liverpool. I see goals in this game. I see goals, and I think also because there's too much experimenting going on. You know, there's not too much structure within the games as well. So I think there will be more than two goals within that game. And as you can see, my odds are sitting at 3.28. So for those who don't really understand betting in a sense, it's you take the amount that you're betting on and you times it by 3.28. And that's how much you're getting back. Three times, guys. You get three times your money back. So that's going to be my bet slip. Always remember to place your bets at betway.co.za. We've come to the end of the show and <laughs> always got to leave you with something. The PSL heard my cries. They've released the fixtures. <laughs> 5th of August is when it starts. And as you can see, that's the first weekend on your screen. The first weekend of the DSTV Premiership. Which fixture are you looking forward to? Because I got to tell you, that Cape Town City going up against Mamluri Sunlounge looks tasty. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you're notified for future episodes.